Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 34, an asymmetrical prepreg carbon layup. It's just four plies, but the layup is not symmetrical about the midplane of the laminate, and that causes some trouble. Here's a look at the laminate schedule. It's just those four plies, 0, 090, 0, 090. The key ideas, laminate symmetry, and over bleeding resin out of prepreg. First, balanced but not symmetrical. The ply orientations about the midplane have a lot to do with stability of the shape, of the finished laminate, shrinkage, some sheer stuff. Symmetrical plies stay nice and flat. This is laminate sample number four. It's a bit thicker, but it is almost perfectly symmetrical and balanced. You can see the symmetrical plies working out from that orange midplane there. And here's a look at the mold surface. You can see it's quite dry. It bled out a little bit too much resin here. You can see the weight as estimated versus the weight that we got. Lost some. I went to measure the vacuum bag stack and how much resin it soaked up, cut out some dry stuff, measured the dry, and then the ones with the resin, calculated how much resin was soaked up. It went back and had a look at the estimated amount of resin that should have been bled out versus the amount that was actually measured. It's relatively close given the error here. And in terms of the fiber volume fraction as calculated for the laminate, definitely a little too little resin left in this. So starting here, laying up on an aluminum plate with release coat on it. This is the material. It is a 300 gram prepreg uni with a Gurit low temp SE84LV resin system in it. It's about 35% resin by weight. Putting it down on here. This is the fiber orientation. I'm going to peel up the backer. The plate is warm, it's about 30 C, and sticks really nicely. So this next ply, I'm gonna put down at 90 to that first one. This is just a simple cross ply laminate, 0, 090, 0, 090. So I'm gonna lay up these two, making some effort to get them to stick together nicely without any wrinkles, despite the heat. Once they're stuck, they're stuck here at this temperature, so Again, this is not ideal. If I'd wanted it really good, I would have debulked that first ply. I would be much more careful about this. This is just a little extra piece I'm laying up for another project. So I'm going to peel off the backer from those first two plies. And I like to use infusion mesh. You can use perforated release film and breather. Sometimes it's nice to leave the backer on the carbon and perforate that just to protect the carbon a little bit. And I'm going to do a trick here that is not really um, aerospace approved. This is something that I know is a turbo bag. Uh, I've only really ever seen it used at one place I've worked. Uh, it's pretty handy sometimes. You're using a stretchy vacuum bag. This is the thin AirTech stretch lawn. And it's nice in that it seals itself to the edge without any sealant tape. And when you get it right, ideally with more flange than this, it works pretty well. It takes a bigger pump because it's wasting a lot of vacuum. You're never going to get a perfect debulk this way, but for doing patches, small things, it's better than no debulk. And uh, I can help press material together. If you're going to be using an autoclave, you're really more concerned about uh, removing wrinkles or compaction as opposed to a real good debulk. You can see it seals itself. I don't recommend this. I'll show you a little bit how to do it right, but it's interesting. I just wanted to do a little test here. This may have a little to do with our surface finish issues. But here we go with um, ply three and four. This prepreg has been around a bit. You can see that it's not coming straight off a roll. So, you know, 
uh, not ideal here. But it's really not what we're, we're looking at. Uh, another quick squish with the sketchy debulk. And this is how to do it right. Uh, this is laminate sample number four. You can see I'm actually sealing down a bag to, in this case, a Teflon surface, which is really nice because it peels up easily, and giving it a real debulk um, that'll be um, five, ten minutes. And so now I'm ready to put the cook bag on using this coated peel ply, which trim back. There's not a lot of extra flange on this. And here's a piece of P90 release film. This has got a little bit fewer holes than a typical release film, a P3 that you might see. Um, it's supposed to bleed a little less. I'm using a thin breather here. But this is such a thin laminate. There's so little excess resin that uh, it's still going to turn out to be a problem. What you can do here is using a thin fiberglass. 100 gram fiberglass. Here's the pump. It's a really high vac pump, but not much capacity. Sucking this down. Ready to cook. Got a thermocouple stuck on there. I'm going to cook this on this aluminum plate with a little bit of um, breather for just an insulation on top. And this is an aluminum Mic6 plate that has a, a silicone heater uh, for a 3D printer bed stuck to the bottom. And it works really well. This is after a cook cycle. Um, it was a relatively quick, relatively warm cook cycle, and the impact that may have had on resin viscosity as it started to gel may have been part of the problem in terms of bleeding off too much resin. You can see the panel is already demolding itself um, from the aluminum plate, and this has a bit to do with the coefficient of thermal expansion, the aluminum being higher and it having already released but you can see there was nothing going on there holding that. Here is the trimmed up panel with a peel ply. You can see it's bent and the surface is pretty ugly. There's some dry fiber in there. Not bad but certainly not the way it should be and you see plenty of resin in that peel ply and in the breather. That's resin that ideally should have stayed in the laminate. Prepreg peel ply is a good solution for this because it doesn't take any resin out and a perforated film with smaller holes further apart and a lighter breather fabric like a hundred gram cloth fiberglass with another solid release film over the top and then more breather. The thickness averaged out to about 1.15 millimeters weight 155 grams, 5.5 ounces per square foot. Again, a bit less resin than there should have been in there. So here's the surface. I think the aluminum plate or the release system may have exacerbated this a bit, but you can see the, the pop from the lack of symmetry there. It's a, a balanced laminate because it has the same amount of fiber uh, in each direction. It just isn't necessarily symmetrical about that mid plane. There is a website too, explorecomposites.com. It goes with this YouTube channel. There are a lot of articles about practical composites. Thanks for checking it out.